Hello, this is Pastor David Roy with another broadcast today. Uh, I want you to turn your Bibles to Exodus in the Old Testament, the second book, uh, the Old Testament, Exodus, the second chapter. And we'll read verses one through six. And there went a man of the house of Levi and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bear a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, this is one of the Hebrews' children. Turn to your neighbor and say, giving birth to your deliverance. Giving birth to your deliverance. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. They were pressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go, go down. Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell my people go, go down. Moses, way down in Egypt land, tell giving birth to your deliverance. At our text today, we find that the children of Israel had been in 400 years of captivity. Isn't it amazing how the children of Israel and African Americans' life seems to parallel with one another? They suffered in Egyptian bondage, for 400 years, and here we are in America, celebrating, not celebrating, but pain of 400 years of captivity in this country. 2019 marked 400 years that we had been here in America. And even though we live in a vast ocean of material prosperity, as Dr. King said, we still live on a lonely island of poverty, but God is getting ready to give birth to our deliverance. The Bible said that the children of Israel were in captivity and 
There arose a Pharaoh. This is what brought them into captivity. If you look at the first chapter of Exodus, it says now in the eighth verse, there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Joseph, who had saved Egypt when they were going through famine, he revealed to the Pharaoh his dream of seven lean cows and seven fat cows. And the seven lean cows ate up the seven fat cows, and there was great poverty. He gave him the revelation of what to do to save the nation and to save the world at that time. And so we find that it's amazing how folk forget you. When they get up on their feet, they forget about the one who was the bridge that brought them across. And I don't care what America says right now. America is forgetting that if it were not for the black man, the black woman, America would not be the country that it is. They had all of those many years, hundreds of years of free labor or low cost labor. Oh, you better hear me today. And so we find that children of Israel were burdened. They were given burdens because of, look what he said. Come on, verse 10, and let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when a war comes, they join the other side. And here it is that we have fought wars alongside our white brothers and white sisters. We have fought wars, but yet when it came, we came back home, we didn't get the honor and the respect that we would do. He said, let us set taskmasters over them and, and, and afflict them with burdens and let them build us cities where we can hold our treasures in. But look at verse 12. But the more they... Uh, persecuted them. The more they persecuted the children of Israel, the more they multiplied and grew. They were grieved because of the children of Israel and the Egyptians made their life hard. Oh, you don't hear me today. Don't you see a parallel here in America? Our life has been made hard, but in spite of all of it, look, 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 look. Verse 14, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and, and mortar and brick and all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor, hard work. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives. If this was not enough, he spoke to the midwives and, and the midwives name was Sapura and Pu. And he said to them that when these Hebrew women give birth, I want you to let the women, the male, the female children live and kill the male. Oh my God. Do you not see a parallel today? They want us either in jail or dead. But I'm here to let you know, God is getting ready to give birth to our deliverance. Thank God for you millennials that are on the streets right now protesting. Don't let your protest degenerate to physical violence. Stay with peaceful protests because I'm here to let you know your peace, peaceful protest will give birth to our deliverance. The word says the children of Israel, uh, the Hebrew midwives said, uh, uh, we're not going to do this. They, they went to God and God told them, don't kill those male babies. And so they refused to do it. And, and as a result, God blessed them. But then Pharaoh said, okay, well, I'll send my own people in to kill these babies, these male babies, like George Floyd and, and, and Ambry, Ambry, uh, uh, Ambry uh, Ahmad. And so he said, you can kill these male babies, but let the females live. We want them. And Pharaoh charged all of his people saying, every son that is born, you will cast into the river to die. And every daughter you shall save alive. And so this is the backdrop of our message today. We find that there was a man of the house of Levi. His name is Amram. And uh, this a woman of the daughter of Levi. And her name was uh, Jochebed. And so this is the mother and father of Moses. And we find here in the second verse that a woman conceived and bare a son. And, and, and she hid him 
and, and, and she hid him for three months. Look at the miracle of God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. She hid him for three months, and they were searching for male babies, but they did not find this one because God kept that baby from crying for three months. God is doing a miracle in our midst, even right now, today. And so when she could no longer hide the baby, she made an ark, a mini version of the ark of Noah. She made a small version of it and she dabbed it with slime and put bulrush and with pitch and put the child inside of the ark and put it into the river and then let her, his sister Miriam, she hid herself and followed from a distance and watched what would happen. And look at God. God provided a way uh, of escape. God is providing a way of escape for us, even now as a people, in the midst of their persecution, in the midst of all that many of them have done to us. God is letting the white folk, Asian people, people of all nationalities and creed, join with us and say, we are not going to let Pharaoh hold us down any longer. Police brutality will not hold us back any longer. They will not allow our schools to no longer be the best, the worst schools. They will become better because God is getting ready to birth our deliverance. Get ready, get ready to receive our deliverance. The Bible said the children of Israel had suffered 400 years, but God gave birth to this special child. The Bible said that Pharaoh's daughter was down there bathing. Look how God's providence. God always got a ram in the bush. God fixed it where Pharaoh's daughter was down there bathing. And when she was bathing, she saw this little bitty boat, this little bull rush of an ark floating down. And she sent her maidens, go check this out for me and see what it is. They brought it to her. And when she looked on the inside, she saw the baby. Now remember I told you, when the soldiers were looking for the baby to kill the baby, the baby did not cry. But when Pharaoh's daughter opened up the bulrush and looked inside and saw the baby, then the Bible said the baby wept because God wanted to give favor for this baby. She said, this is one of the Hebrews' babies, <laughs> but, but I'm not going to allow this baby to be killed. This is my baby now. This is, and then Miriam came and said, would you like for me to go get one of the Hebrew women to nurse him? And she said, yes. And she said, now, not only that, I will pay wages. Oh, God, look at what God does. When God is on your side, if you be still, God will fight your battle. The Bible says that, 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 that this, this Hebrew Miriam took her brother back to his own mother. So that she could nurse him. Oh God. And Pharaoh's uh, daughter paid her wages. Oh God. To nurse her own child. Don't you tell me God won't work for us. The Lord Jesus will work. He's working for us even right now. Even in our pain and our distress. He has heard our cry. He has heard our groans. And I'm here to let you know. He's getting ready to give birth. To our deliverance. The Bible say that Moses was reared by his own mother until he was of age. And then he went back to Pharaoh when the child grew. Verse 10, the child grew. So you see verse 9, Pharaoh's daughter uh, was uh, said, take him to the child way and nurse it for me. And I will give you wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. The mother of Moses got to nurse her own child. And I believe why she was nursing him, she was teaching him. And I believe those mothers of the movement, when they were nursing us, they were teaching us the ways of our people, letting us know this is how our people operate. And I'm here to let you know today, in spite of the frustrations of this moment, don't allow the frustrations to make you abort this vision. Don't let the frustrations of the moment make you divorce yourself 
of getting what God has for you. God is getting ready to birth a great movement in our nation. Right in our midst, in the midst of a pandemic, God showed us that the civil sins of this nation cause civil unrest. Civil unrest. We have a pandemic going on, but we already had pandemonium going on within our race. But God is getting ready to birth his blessing. I believe it. I believe that it, it happened. And God knows. God knows we sympathize and we give our sympathy to the families that have suffered. And we don't want any more families to suffer. But I'm here to let you know that blood will not be shed in vain. The blood of Dr. King will not be shed in vain. The blood of Floyd, George Floyd, will not be shed in vain. The blood goes to the ground and God sees the blood. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that goes beyond any of our blood. Our blood is not pure enough to save, but the blood of Jesus can not only die for us, but he can get up and raise us from the dead. The word says, Pharaoh's daughter say, take him, nurse him, and on top of it, I'll pay your wages. The child grew in verse 10, and she brought the child back after she had nurtured him and taught him the ways of the movement, and he became her son, Pharaoh's son, Pharaoh's daughter, Moses. She said, I'm going to call his name Moses because she drew him out of the water. And you can read on and you will find out that Moses ended up trying to abort. He aborted the plan of God. Forty years he was raised in Egypt. Forty years he was raised in Egypt. And during that 40 years, he saw one of his brothers being punished by an Egyptian. And he raised up his hand and while no one was looking, he killed him. But that was not God's way. And he was put out of Egypt 40 years in Egypt. 40 years in the desert. But then when he came back, God brought him back and said, let my people go. And 10 plagues went through uh, e uh, Egypt. And the Bible said the last plague was the death of the first moon. When you wish bad on people, God already got our backs. Even though it doesn't look like it right now, God is getting ready to turn this nation around. Even our president even our president whose govern his lips are dripping with the words of interposition as Dr. King said and nullification God is getting ready to change this thing we must get out and vote we must vote like never before we need to vote like President Obama is about to get elected again we must get this man out of the White House God is getting ready to turn our situation around. He's getting ready to give birth to our deliverance. Receive it right now. The Bible said that Moses went back and said, let my people go. But when they were on their way out, when they were on their way out, after they got their deliverance, they were on their way out, they borrowed from their neighbors. This is what the Bible said. They borrowed from their neighbors. And they got all of their possessions and gold and silver. Oh, why am I bringing this up? They borrowed from their neighbors. And when they were on their way out, they saw Pharaoh's army coming from behind. They saw mountains to the left and mountains to the right. And they saw the Red Sea in front of them. The very sea that had brought Moses to them. They saw the sea. And Moses didn't know what to do. And he looked up to God and prayed. And God said, just stretch your rod out. He stretched his rod out over the sea, and the sea parted, and they walked across on dry ground. And then when they got to the other side, Pharaoh's army began to pursue them. And as Pharaoh's army got to pursue them, Bible said Moses took the rod and stretched it out again, and Pharaoh's army got drowned. Well, why, why does that matter? The Bible said that they borrowed all of their goods, and Pharaoh's army got drowned, and you don't have to pay a dead man. You don't pay a dead man. When Pharaoh's army drowned it, all of those goods were given. God is getting ready to give repairments. I just believe it in my spirit. I, I, I may not know when it may happen, but I believe that God is getting ready to give repairments to African-American people for all of the pain that we've experienced in this country. 
of all of the lack of wealth. Every white man that came to this country came and had 40 acres and a mule. Black folk hadn't gotten theirs. But I believe in the name of Jesus that this nation is going to rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that every man is created with inalienable rights, the right of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And America is going to rise up. I believe that God is getting ready to do it. It's going to rise up and live out this creed. I believe it. And that's why I'm holding on. I'm going to keep on holding on. I'm going to keep on going forward. And you keep going forward. Be encouraged, my brother. Again, be encouraged, my sister. Be careful out there as you're protesting. You have a right to protest peacefully. You have a right to do it peacefully. Remember, God is getting ready to give birth to our deliverance. And, 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 and some of the people that were once your enemies, God is going to turn and make them your friends. Those people that were once against us, God is going to turn them around. Some people will never love us. Well, don't worry about them. You, you, you go forward with the vision that God has given you. Go forward and teach people about what the Lord has told you to do. And let us rise up. Let us rise up as a people. Let us unite, not just black people, white people, all nationalities of people. Let us come together and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. We're free at last. Sister, if you don't know the Lord and the free pardon of your sin, 
God is getting ready to give birth to your deliverance. Father, I am a sinner. Say these words. Father, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. Jesus, come into my heart and make me whole. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, that you were raised and God raised you from the dead for me. In Jesus' name, amen. And we shall overcome some.